Satisfied with your bank? Have you considered a credit union? Midwest America offers about any service you need. The convenience of free mobile banking, debit cards, ATMs, free online banking and bill payer, competitive loans, mortgages, and more. Deposits insured to a half million dollars. Hey, consider this an invitation. Your next bank should be a credit union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. Midwest America Federal Credit Union. In 37 years of coaching college football, University of St. Francis coach Kevin Donnelly had only been choked up once after a game, and that was when his Georgetown University team won the 1991 National Championship. But when the Cougars fought back for a 45-42 win at number 6 Marion this past Saturday, the emotions came back for the NEIA's all-time winning as coach. Gentlemen, I have coached in well over 400 college football games. I have never, ever in my life. Yes! No. Well, you know, it was one of the most unbelievable comeback wins that I can recall. And I've coached well over 400 college football games. The resiliency of our players that just never quit, kept fighting their way back into it. Down 21 the first quarter, down 20 going into the fourth quarter, and uh, big plays on both sides of the ball. I mean, it was a team victory over an outstanding football team, and uh, couldn't have been prouder. To start the game, the Cougars found themselves in a tough situation after Marion's pressure defense caused two turnovers in the first quarter. The Knights held a 21-0 lead with 2 minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the frame. On the ensuing possession, quarterback Nick Ferrer found Seth Cote for a touchdown. Well, Seth's a playmaker. He's a great receiver. Uh, it's awfully difficult to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. you got to pay special attention. You know, we've got a great receiving court. You know, you throw in Cam Smith and Boswell and Eppenzeller and Stewart and, you know, the whole core. I mean, we just, uh, McDowell, my gosh, we got we got playmakers out there. Uh, Nick is, is getting the ball to the receiving core and uh, got a pretty good stable of backs as well. Uh, I thought we saw probably one of the best pressure defenses that we're going to see. Uh, they came after a quarterback. I think um, they felt like they just had to get to him if they were going to win the football game. And they they were bringing five, six, seven people all day long. And uh, our offensive line, uh, I thought, did a great job protecting the quarterback. Yep, we got uh, sacked a couple times. But uh, again, the resiliency and the toughness of our players to keep, uh, keep on going. Defensive end Lucas Sparks said after Seth Coates' 61-yard touchdown reception, it was time for the defense to step up. Well, when we got to that point, um, they had two pretty big plays kind of swing their way. They had uh, the turnover, and they were right down there to score, so that was a pretty easy score for them. Then they had a big play. They had scored twice, actually three times, and the offense had went down and scored, so we come over the bench after they scored again. And Coach Wagner tells us that it's on us. The offense is doing their job. They go down and score. We have to make a play. And then that very next series, um, Wilmer was able to hit the ball and Cale caught it and we all rallied together to get in the end zone and get the score. And then we kind of knew at that point that it was going to be on us that we needed to really make plays and really do things to kind of help the team move forward. And then uh, was it Spencer had that it was great he showed that he was going to blitz, came back out. Quarterback didn't think he'd be there, took it, took it straight to the house. Spencer had a great game, did a lot of things that way. Two minutes later, after Spencer Coward's 27-yard interception return for a touchdown, St. Francis got the ball back with 136 left to play before halftime. On that drive, senior Cody Appenzeller suffered a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision. Four plays later, Appenzeller was back in the game and receiving a touchdown pass from freshman running back P.J. Dean. St. Francis went into halftime down 28-25. Well, we got it turned, and that was the play that I think really did it. Um, Pat, uh, not only offensive coordinator, drew that one up uh, last week, and it was our Friday install special. And you know, P.J. Dean's a, a great athlete, and he's been playing that position all year, so. 
We had the, the Tebow jump pass from P.J. Dean to Cody and because we felt like those safeties were just going to support uh, extremely hard, which they did, and Cody was wide open. But you had to, had to execute the play, so P.J. got it to him and Cody caught it. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, the momentum shifted, similar to a game last year. Um, they scored right before the half. We were ahead and momentum shifted. So but they got it back in the second half. You know, they took over in the third quarter. And uh, as I said, we're going down the fourth quarter trailing by 20. So, you know, the resiliency, the character, the toughness, my gosh, you know, never quit. You know, snap the whistle 60 minutes. The USF defensive line epitomizes playing snap to whistle for 60 minutes. But the Cougars entered Saturday's game with only six sacks throughout four games, which has been a bit frustrating for Coach Eric Wagner's unit. I mean, yeah, it's always frustrating playing D-line and not getting sacks, but I think a lot of the times they kind of game plan against us in that way, because most of the times they're throwing the ball before we can even get there. So most of the time we just got to get in his face and be able to get pressure on him, get hits. We haven't had very many teams actually sit back and try to throw it and get to like their second progression or so because they're usually dropping back and throwing it right away. And normally if you look at it, the plays where they're actually sitting back and the first read is gone, we're getting there. We're hitting him, getting in his face, making him throw bad throws. Following a P.J. Dean 45-yard touchdown run to open the fourth quarter, Sparks got to Marion's Hayden Northern in a big way, sacking the quarterback and forcing a fumble that was recovered by Cowherd. USF was down 42 to 32 at the time with nine and a half minutes left in the game. I mean, it was great to be able to really contribute to it in that kind of way, but I, I was just really just doing my job, mostly just trying to get to the quarterback. Luckily, we had great coverage on that play. If you look at it, he pumps it and then we get there right away. And luckily enough, my arm kind of hit the ball a little bit when I hit him and it fell out and it was just a great feeling. And then we were able to go down and score, and it was just a real big momentum. That momentum continued as quarterback Nick Ferrer found receiver Sean Boswell twice on scoring receptions of over 20 yards. Boswell may have surprised a few on the opposing sideline, making some huge plays down the stretch. Well, he certainly did. There were two outstanding catches, and the, the last one right at the end of the game, you know, he caught it in traffic and uh, I think had a little help from his buddy Seth Coat getting him in the end zone there um, but uh, to get that uh, final score was just huge. It was huge it was it was great to beat Marion I mean it's always been a rivalry ever since I've been here um, my first year here when I didn't play when I redshirted we played them twice really close game the first one and then we played them in the playoffs and lost to them on a, a last second call or something like that towards the end and then the year after that, they were down, and we kind of smacked them around a little bit. And then the next year, last year, they kind of got had their way with us in the second half. It was a good game in the first, and then we just kind of collapsed, didn't really recover. And then this year, we just kind of full, just all out, 100% the entire game. It's just, it's just great to be able to get a win over them. But it's great to get that out of the way and be able to beat your rival like that. But that wasn't our main goal for the season. Our, still, our number one goal is to win every game we play, not just beat Marion. And the play of sophomore Spencer Coward was huge, leading his team in tackles with a tackle for a loss to go along with his pick six in fumble recovery. He became the first national defensive player of the week for the Cougars since Ross Bauman during the 2011 season. Coward is the second USF player to be named National Player of the Week this season. That's right, uh, Nick Ferrer, the quarterback, uh, several weeks ago, and then uh, Spencer, I think the first defensive player we've had National Player of the Week in some time. And uh, 12 tackles and uh, uh, the, the pick six, and then actually I think uh, the last turnover of the game that gave us the opportunity to, for Boswell's final score. Um, Coach Didier had made some adjustments by uh, how we were handling that toss sweep and Cowherd was the adjustment and we were blitzing off the edge and we saw that thing and uh, put it on the ground and then I think it was Christian Johnson that recovered the fumble and the uh, rest is history. The history of Springfield Shawnee High School football is rich in tradition 
and includes coach Kevin Donnelly along with Sparks. Lucas followed his high school teammates Brad Jarzab and Joel Schilke to St. Francis. The three enjoyed a very successful high school career with the Braves, concluding with a 2011 state runner-up finish in Ohio's Division III. Well, right after the season, our head coach never really let schools come in and talk to us until after the season was over. I remember the first coach that I really remember coming to talk with us was Coach Wagner. And at first, I just kind of didn't really pay much attention to it. wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Maybe even thought I was a little bit better than I was. And then once the, kind of the recruiting process went on, I was kind of lazy and it honestly didn't really promote myself or anything like that. But then Brad and Joel were really, they really had interest in the school, so they really liked it. So they had went on a visit and then they talked me into it. After they were there, they said that Coach Wagner asked about me. So it kind of made me feel good to think that someone was still actually thinking about me in that aspect. So I set up a visit and I came, and then ever since I just really liked it. I really became a cougar. It's just a, a hard-nosed attitude. It's a tradition. There's a lot of tradition on this program. There's lots of winning, and I came from a winning program in high school, and then I really just wanted to keep that going. And I, once I got here, I knew that I could be able to really contribute to a good team. So I really just took steps to play my role basically until I get to the point where I could actually be a starter and kind of make a bigger impact than what I did in my first three years. Up next, the Cougars face a two and two Siena Heights team that leads the MSFA Mid-East Division in passing offense averaging 383 yards per game compared to St. Francis 371 yards. Their starting quarterback missed the first three games. Uh, he's a senior. He um, was the guy last year, and um, they, they beat us at homecoming last year. Uh, they are leading the conference in passing offense right now. And uh, they throw it well. My gosh, they have speed, uh, receiver. Got some big play guys. They throw the bomb. Uh, the Blackman kid here from Fort Wayne is uh, an outstanding player. He's a punt return guy. He's a big play guy. Uh, so they put it up. It's going to be a real challenge for our secondary and uh, our whole defense. We've got to pressure the quarterback because uh, they've got some guys that can run and uh, the quarterback gets it to them. You know, on the other side, uh, they have eight returning starters on defense from a year ago that held us to 187 yards total offense. So, uh, real challenge. I think this is going to be. Uh, a uh, big, big game, you know, and it, it's sometimes it's difficult to uh, get through the adrenaline of a big win the week before, um, we're making our players aware of it, and you just have to uh, be wise enough to deal with it, and uh, you got to put that great victory behind, put it on the shelf, enjoy it in the off season, and get ready for the next one because uh, everybody's going to play the best football against us. The Saints starting quarterback Travis Sikowski set a new school record throwing for 470 yards the last time out for Siena Heights in a 38-31 loss to St. Xavier. Yeah, you know, if uh, their kickoff coverage team broke down three times and gave St. X short fields, they would have beaten St. X. So, you know, we're aware of all these things. We've studied them pretty carefully. I think they're well coached. They have a lot of talent. And certainly they've got to be frustrated at 2-2 two two when probably they should be 4-0. So this is a very dangerous football team and uh, we certainly have a great deal of respect for them. Opposing teams have shown a great deal of respect for the speedy Cougar defensive line, which will have its hands full this Saturday at Bishop Darcy Stadium going up against the nation's number one pass offense. I know that they're a heavy passing team. Um, they had a different quarterback in the first, what was it, four games that they played so far, first three games? They had a different quarterback, but the quarterback that's played now, number 18, played against us last year. He was the quarterback that started when they upset us last year. It's just, they're a huge passing team. It looks like they have both quarterbacks that can kind of step in, because the first quarterback had big numbers too. Um, like I said, they throw the ball a lot. It's going to be big on us as a D-line in our position to be able to get to the quarterback, kind of get in his face, make him throw bad throws, just all kinds of stuff, get pressure, and then on the back end be able to cover and keep him in front of us, really. No big plays. It's, I think from what I've talked to Coach Wagner, it's 
they're a pretty big play offense. They've had multiple plays over 20 yards, which really swings games. That's that's huge in a game. Like Marion, for instance, they had quite a few big plays against us. That's why the score was the way it was. So we really have to limit the big plays and just kind of do our job, keep things in front of us, and tackle all the kind of things, and we'll be successful. The Cougars don't necessarily have revenge on their minds heading up against a Saints team that beat St. Francis a year ago, 27 to 21. Instead, USF looks to continue as they have all season long, one opponent at a time. I mean, you always kind of have that, that like feeling in the back of your mind of the revenge for what happened, but we're looking at it just more as a game. There's our next opponent. We're just, whoever comes in front of us, we want to knock them down. We want to win. It doesn't, I don't think that's really a big mindset for me is revenge. It's just really to keep this season going and keep going off of what we've been doing so far.